So tonight we want to recognize you as a global citizen forever. And I now invite Han San Su Chi to the stage to receive the Atlantic Council 2012 Global Citizen Award. Join me in welcoming her. Thank you. Thank you for your very, very warm and very kind welcome. It's an honor to receive the Atlantic Council Award. It is an even greater honor to, be, to receive it alongside Quincy James, Dr. Henry Kissinger, and Sadako Ogata. I feel a bond with each one of them. Quincy Jones, because he is a musician. During the years while I was under detention, I made a resolution that I would never wish for anything. But that resolution was broken again and again, and always for the same reason. I wished again and again that I were mus musically talented. <laughs> because music has a way of reaching out to people across the barriers of language, across the barriers of race and culture, and of course, geographical borders. That is why I so admired musicians and so wished that I were one of them. I could not help wishing that wish. For this reason, I feel very close to all musicians. I felt that during those years when I was removed from the outside world, they gave me something that I could not get for myself. And for this reason, I'm honored to be together tonight with Quincy Jones. Dr. Kissinger, I felt I had a bond with for a completely different reason. Apart from the fact that, of course, I knew about him, as who didn't, I also had with me, during my years of house arrest, his thick book on diplomacy. <laughs> that really kept me going for many, many days. <laughs> and it stopped me from being intellectually lazy. There were times when I was alone and I felt a little inclined to take things easy, mentally easy. But if you read Dr. Kissinger, you realize that this is not what you can do in this life. You have to face the intellectual challenges of our world. And that is how he and other writers helped me. I was helped in many ways by people who did not know that they were in fact helping me. People whose voices I heard on the radio, people whose music I heard on the radio, people whose books I read, whose words I listened to. All this kept me in touch with the outside world. So I was never alone. People have often asked me how I survived those years. But I never felt it was a great difficulty because I felt connected to the rest of the world in spite of the fact that I was physically separated from them. Mrs. Sadako Ugata, again, there is a special bond. She was the very first rapporteur appointed by the United Nations to investigate the human rights situation in my country. When she came on an official visit, I was unable to meet her because I was under house arrest. But again, from my little short wave radio, I heard about her presence in the country. I heard that she was there, and I heard about how much hope she had given to those who wanted to live in peace with their conscience as they pursued their beliefs in the realm of politics and, and the ideas of freedom and democracy. They were given hope by this small woman. I can say small about Mrs. Sadako Odaka, uh, Ogata, although I can't say that about Madame Lagarde. But uh, even compared with me, Mrs. Ogata is small, but she had a big heart, and we in Burma felt that. Even when she left her post as Rapporteur for Human Rights and went to be 
High Commis Commissioner for Refugees. She was not separated from my country because she helped a lot of our people who had gone across the borders to escape political persecution, to escape economic ills. And so she continued to be with us even after she, was, she no longer came back to Burma as part of her job. I hope, however, that in the future she will come back and she will be able to see the changes that will be, I am sure, coming to our country. I have to confess that I'm not quite sure uh, how a global citizen should be defined. I'm not quite sure whether I have the right to call myself a global citizen. If a global citizen is one whose work has attained global proportions, then I'm afraid I cannot really say that I'm one of them. I no way, my work in no way compares with that of my fellow honorees in reaching the far, reaching all the places on this globe. But if a global citizen is one whose concerns encompass all the issues that are common to humanity, then I would like to claim that I, alongside many of the people in Burma, those who have never been beyond their borders, are global citizens. Because what we have been struggling for over the last few decades have been what all human beings would be prepared to suffer for, for our freedom, for our security, for the right to live in peace with our conscience. And in this struggle, we have been helped, we have been supported by people from all over the globe. By taking us into their hearts, they have made us global citizens, even the humblest of us who have never known what it is to go beyond our borders. So tonight, when I'm with you, I would like to tell you a little of what our struggle has been like. I, it has taken the movement for democracy in Burma two decades to reach the point where we could say, now the real work can begin. We can start laying the foundation for a democratic society. For two decades, we had to struggle for the right to lay this foundation. We could say in a way that for two decades, we were simply baking the bricks with which we would lay this foundation. Those were not easy years, but we managed to keep together because we believed in what we were doing and we believed in one another. So tonight is a night when I must pay tribute to my colleagues whose names are unknown to the world, the nameless soldiers of democracy, as I often refer to them. Those nameless soldiers are so much bigger than others like me who are known and who have been given so many honors and who have had so many privileges that our unknown soldiers did not even dream of. They did not join the fight for democracy because they thought they were going to be heroes, but they were heroes and heroines for the simple fact that they expected nothing for the work that they had done. All they wanted was to achieve for our country the right to shape its own destiny. Our people should have the right to shape their own destiny. When Burma was fighting for independence more than 60 years ago, because we achieved independence in 1948, this was the cry that we should have the right to shape our own destiny. Yet, after independence, we found that the people had no right to shape their own destiny. And this is why 
when I entered the movement for democracy in Burma. I said that this was our second fight for independence. The kind of independence that would make our citizens not just those with full privileges in their own country, but also with the potential to take their place as citizens of the world. The long years have of hardship taught us the value of perseverance, the value of self-discipline, the value of friendship and unity. We also learned that it is possible for people to change. We can change others as we ourselves can change that we might be able to meet new challenges. We have had to change. There are some people who seem incapable of change, but even they begin to see that this is the time for our country to take a new path, a path that will lead us to unity, to security, to freedom. Burma is a land of many ethnic nationalities. The Burmese who form the majority are just one of these many ethnic nationalities. We have to learn to live together as a union. When Burma became independent as a union of Burma, we had great hopes that our diversity would be our strength, that because of our very differences, we could make our country more multidimensioned, stronger, more vibrant. These hopes have not yet been realized. We have not achieved the unity we so wanted. But I'm confident that we will be able to achieve it because we owe it to the world. We owe it to all those who have supported us. We owe it to people like you. This evening, I have been shown so much warmth by strangers from lands where I would not have thought they had heard about our struggle, our struggle in Burma. Yet so many have come up to me to support me, to support what I have been doing, to give me kind words that will give me and my colleagues the strength to go on, to complete the task that we set out on 20, 24 years ago. 24 years, that's almost a quarter of a century. I'm very proud of my colleagues who have walked this long path with me. I'm very proud of the fact that they did it in spite of all difficulties. So many have sacrificed all that they have for the sake of their beliefs, of the, for the sake of the cause in which we all believe. I genuinely feel a sense of humility when people say how much I have sacrificed. I feel I have sacrificed nothing, nothing compared to many of my colleagues. Also, I have said often that it was not a sacrifice, it was a choice that I made. I decided to follow a path that I thought was right. And so, really, I deserve no praise for it, nor do I really deserve compassion for any of the problems I might have met along the way, because it was my choice. I chose to walk that path willingly. And I chose to continue along this path because I owe it to all of you and to the people of my country. As political prisoners, we had to learn endurance. As activists, we had to cultivate determination and daring. And now that we have been given the chance to reconstruct our society, we need the courage and the wisdom to let go of old prejudices, to seek reconciliation, to work together in good faith with those who had once been our adversaries. I hope that our experiences will be of some use to others around the world 
who are struggling to rebuild their societies in a shape that will provide them with peace, prosperity, and progress. The ultimate, the best way in which we can repay those who have stood with us through the hard years, the most difficult times, will be to prove that there can be a happy ending to long struggles. We have yet to achieve that ending, but we will move towards it with faith and with daring. And then we shall be able to say, we have earned the title of global citizens. I hope you will stay with us as we work to become truly global citizens. Thank you.